Hello and good morning and thank you for tuning in to TV3 New Day. You're watching Community Manifesto. We are still in the northern region of Ghana. This morning we're coming to you live from the Tamale North constituency. It is a constituency in the general Tamale metropolitan area in the northern region. The member of parliament here is Honorable Al Hassan Sweeney. He's been winning elections for the NDC consecutively uh, since the creation of this constituency. Now, it's considered an NDC stronghold. And this morning, we're hoping to have a well-informed and balanced conversation on the issues that face the people who live in this constituency. We want to understand what the problems are, what the possible solutions are, the things they want changed, the things they want improved, and also going into, into elections um, on December 7th, the things that they will consider when deciding who to vote for. Um, representing the NDC, again, is Al Hassan Sweeney, and representing the NPP, the parliamentary candidate, is Al Haji Abdul Rahman. Um, this engagement that we do, Community Manifesto, is to engage members of the constituency and the community. Even though we often have representations from the various political parties, our primary focus is the people who live in the constituency. So our engagement is with them. And we try as much as possible to make sure that all the people who matter and are concerned um, would know that we are coming to their constituency so that if they choose to send representatives to come and speak to some of the issues, they may. And so everybody knows we're coming here today. All parties and all people in the constituency know that we're here today. All right, so we'll begin as we always do. We put two microphones here um, for you to come to talk to us. Your leaders are here. We are happy to have the Honorable Al Hassan Sweeney, Member of Parliament for Tamale North, here with us. And he's here with some of his executives and some of the leaders in this constituency. So we'll begin. We have one microphone on each side, and I like to begin with, with, with the members of the constituency, people in this community. We encourage you to come to the microphone and speak to the real issues which bother you and the things you're considering as um, elect the December 7 election approaches. So the microphones are open. Before, before the honorable member of parliament speaks and before the leader speak, we would like to hear from you first. So, the microphone is open now. If anybody wants to come to the microphone to speak, they may do so. They may do so now. What's happening? What's happening? And we, you don't have to speak English, by the way. We don't have to speak English because um, this is a local engagement. And so you can speak any language of your choice. You may speak English if you like, but you don't have to speak English. All right. Yes, sir. Okay. Good morning to everyone. Good morning, sir. Uh, my name is um, Kamal Dean, popularly known as I.K. Sini. Um, first of all, now, I would wish to um, uh, indicate to you to uh, send our regards to your management for this very uh, you know, rare opportunity and to state that, but for the respect we have for this very program and your um, uh, television station. I am an ardent um, member of NDC. When I saw your flyer, I first of all thought that um, an opportunity like this should be given to people of equal level. So I thought that it wasn't going to be that balanced because of the quality of representation we are bringing to the parliamentary level um, representation. If you compare that to that of MPP, you realize that the members we are, rep we are presenting as representatives for our various political parties, our representative stands tall. And that said, we can point to a lot of projects being done by our member of parliament. And not just because we are in Nansegu Gumani electoral area. Any electoral area at all within the constituency, that is the 11 electoral areas we have, if you so wish and randomly pick any electoral area and 
decide to change the venue, we are more than well positioned to mention and mention projects being executed by the member of parliament. Even this venue, very venue, you, we, we are having this very program. We can mention more than three projects within very, this very enclave. The classroom block just, just behind you was renovated by our member of parliament. And if you are minded by, uh, with the reasons why member of parliaments are, are elected, aside representative rule, um, the one you are bringing on board should have the quality to negotiate and should have the quality to influence and to bring development to the constituency. And our member of parliament is doing more than that in my view. Because if you so consider how consistent um, 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 uh, you know, district common fund is flowing into the constituency or our district, given the fact that we are only entitled to 2.5% of the, the, the share of it, you realize, compare that to the, the developmental projects that are going on within the constituency. You realize that if you don't complement the member of parliament, you wouldn't be able to even come closer to blaming him. So on that, I will say he's done so, so well, and we need to commend him to do more. <laughs> aside, aside that, aside that, this is just general assessment I am, I am making on, that, on the moment of parliament. If I'm to move sector by sector education, you can mention a lot. I just mentioned this block. If you go to health, within the same electoral area, we have um, a, a, a health center here. He has, a, he has some traces there. If you All go right. to sanitation, All regardless right. of the sector you are making, right. I will wish to end by saying that, that as, as constituents, we need to support him, not only NDC members, I call on MPP members to support him. Even if you are voting for whoever you are voting, we should support the member of parliament so that it will serve as encouragement to whoever will become member of parliament in the future to do All more right. than that. Thank you. So we'll take, we'll, take five, um, we'll take five comments from here and then we'll take five comments from the other side. So four more people will speak here and then we'll come here. But I encourage you, if, if you want to say something which has already been said, please, you don't have to repeat it, okay? So you can speak to another issue. We have only one hour, so we'll be able to cover a lot of issues, okay? Go ahead. Now, I'm going to say, 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 I'm going Nchi hali te tamani na konstruction nchi hata zahani la ban yuar fargo tangu ban maane songa kana kabu yuar fargo ama gumna tume ane dia hali na zungo kama chante le kama mfa nante five percent abe nyara tunisha te tangu ban maapuni kati mbwa banya bole tahle kala la maakarabia te biyaku maapuni tena pala gani yes bebe wamu kadema de ndi sendi rongo na kabla shaba kwa zavuti la beto yuar tashelma bani mbetu la la tashma. All right, so the gentleman is talking about the District Assembly Common Fund. Um, he says that the DCE is not distributing it equitably, and he's asking if we, we are all not Ghanaians in this constituency, and that's what he wants to find out. All right, my lady, you may speak. Nah. That's why I'm going to be a little bit of 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 Munyam <laughs> Alasan so yene, I see the power. Alasan so yene, I see the power. O kwan yo, yel mangle hali a e nana do be bawum ye kanato kwantesa alasan so yene yalumo. O en dio me. O en dio me. 
Demongala Nimverso, Muntum de Terti, the Dana Fe Yali, she caught the polo, and found no tum beshati Terregasia Pam. When you're soon yellow on Vartir, Nirbo Pam Tiango, Kanya Nimverso, Munfani, Bright and Akabayan Way B. Brian, where you be? Be my mean belam, my bejla wuntanga. Co cannot sing yelk and no, never between a be canna. Never to boil laugh it to the man, a baby lamb is down the banner. Never to boil laugh it to the man, Kalanji, Bargo Kulabagency. Co cannot the boy jishe, and non tabashi and taba, cabajin de mana caramma. The zoo, alas and so yene. I debate, I debate, my love. Kabiana last and so you know, you're young and I the power. Now, no, no, I'll bark and no one. Cut on your vanilla fee. Cut your cut to Jolo and Chunk Catana. I'm by a pump. All right. So, um, just by way of quick translation, um, this lady says that Tamale North here, for Tamale North here, they don't have a, a president. And that Al Hassan Suini is their president, and that he's done a lot of things for them. She talks about health care. Uh, she says that when the nurses come around for weighing, they they do not have a place to sit, or they did not before. But now the Honorable Al Hassan Suini has provided um, a place for them to sit, and he's taking care of them, and they're able to have their babies and take care of their babies without any problem. And that even if His Excellency Nanado comes to run as a member of Parliament in this constituency. There is no way he'll win against um, Al Hassan Suini. So she's praying to God to give him another term in office, basically. Yes, sir. <clears throat> okay, good morning. Mine is just a commendation and a question. First of all, I need to commend our MP very well because since 1992, we have had about five MPs. He is the fifth MP. And among the five MPs, he is the best. And I'm a teacher, and I want to know, he's been doing something about education, and I will still hope for him to do more, inshallah, if John Mahama win. So I want to know from the MP, what are his plans towards education in this community, or in this country? Thank you so much. And this, this will be the final one from this side, and then we'll come here, and then we'll hear from our leaders. And you learn born Sadat, can you chogu electra Iriana? No commercial and Pahanella, Tim Palati with train and pump. Nabuntu Zang, a Jim Water Tawakana, Tamalanof, Nettito Yale, Tim Malaya to Ashanga, Zang Party, Constituents Mile, the Abum Simpolo. The Mirunia Carnella, a debate in the annual between Honorable Alas and Suhin and Mene, Mr. Abre. Unfortunately, in Tahat is a Hanya than Kanasham. Jilmaka of Batitama. The Tamalan of Nama, Jilmaka, Abre, Mene, Onyanga, Kabatitama, Dadam Motabo, do Hanati, Pua, Kabachan Lolekam, Dan Shalbunzoka, Tamalan of La, Zumo, O Abandon Tama, Naomi Uti, Benda Abandon to Cham Chango, the Sahara, we had little Murkat to two chance, but the other to Moshepolo, Manu Michel and Zampa Carnella, and Tazasa Banja, and Motavan be Tamalan of Halle Ayana in Bibiarme, Kayana to Akurme, and Taha Abanyaria to Ashanga, the man chunk to Tule. Loyal and canny, sect and canny, health in Yale, education, uh, infrastructure. Loyal and canny, Kachini man, Kabinaka, Honorable Alas and Suyene, Koche, Bobble Bahnemane. Champ to call a Tangbanzola Mono Yanga, MPP government. Eight years, two months in Chabandu, eight years. And I could talk about electoral area. Can you have a footprint like electoral area money? The canny, Honorable Alas and Suyene, Tenant Tosun will call Ottuma, and then compare it to Wabu Gomlan Tizasa, and Marcus A. Kasa Naru Assemble Be MPP reps so we are peace in Munzane or Timur debate. So Tian Sula so come. Tamal enough. Since then, create Halizum or Tibinia Minister. And now Gafara, Paul comes out sudden conduct. The way any NDC, Men His Excellency John Drama and Mama, Benyaraba and the next coming elections. Karamal Bukata and Tamal enough Numa. The big representative so we are active. Come on, proven so far that on an active war, Katipigo can now use the international minister, opportunity in Bongo and the minister, and opportunity in Bongo and the Labum Summa, the Chang Modern Tinta Halisham, the Zotia Sulatama Be Wabgama, and Rafa Kinjango, and Okonia Wabunka, Wunka, and our constituents. The Surabame, 
Patale nyale, brapiga, tra, patale nyale, brapi wabu, katipinya hagi. Rafik to Suriam, the joint is a katipigo on Rabu Suyene. Okay, thank you. All right, um, so this, this gentleman is talking about, well, he spoke about a few things. And um, first, he said that he hoped that this would have been a debate between the NDC and the NPP, but unfortunately, he doesn't see any representation from the NPP here. Um, but, but, but just to correct that, this is not supposed to be a debate between the NDC and NPP. This is supposed to be an engagement with you in the community, and we are happy that sometimes our leaders come so that they can answer the questions that you ask. Then he also um, spoke about some developments which Honorable um, Al-Hassan Tuini has brought into the constituency. He spoke about education and infrastructure. And, and um, he said that the absence of the MPP is disrespectful to the people of the constituency and to the program that we're holding here today. And he says Rafiq is from the Elephant family. Uh, is Rafiq here? Rafiq, do you want to speak? Please go ahead. Good morning. Good morning, Rafiq. Uh, before I proceed, I would like to thank the elders here and also the Tamil North constituency NDC secretary. I think he was trying to obstruct me from speaking to the media. Yeah. Uh, what I would like to say is that a honorable member of parliament for Tamil North, I think in a month and seven days' time, he will be in opposition again. That is to say, come 7th January 2025, we will have Honorable Alhaji Yarna Abdurrahman Abre in Parliament. <laughs> okay, let's let him speak. All right. yes. Let him speak. Uh, let him speak. Let him speak. Let Thank him you speak. very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think, Let him speak. Uh, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, my name is Rafik Ankuma, a member of the New Patriotic Party. But this morning, unfortunately, I represent the Nyanshego Gumani electoral area and not the New Patriotic Party, for the reason best known to the party leadership. I would like to ask my honorable member of parliament a straightforward question. Like I said earlier, in a two months, sorry, in two months and seven days, he will be in opposition. People do complain about one thing, that for the eight years he has been in parliament, he usually claim projects that are being run by government, i.e. the district assemble project. This morning, I am here have his take on that. If you could have your cameras zoomed to your left and right, you will see an artifact overlay along the stretches. For the first time. Please, please, please. I am not saying, I am not saying he didn't do it. I am not saying he didn't allow do it. I am not talk. saying that. I'm not saying please that. Please allow the man to talk. I am not saying that. Allow the man please, to talk. Please, 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 please. There's no time. Please. I want the honorable member of parliament to have his take on that, whether it is from his own initiative or that of the assembly or the government of the day, Nana Dodonkwa and Baumia's government. Thank you very much, honorable member. So you want to find out if the asphalted road is by the member of parliament or by the, the government. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. Good morning. Good morning. To everyone. It is yes, unfortunate sir. to have my brother come here to speak like this. After he has seen the works of the Honorable Member of Parliament for Tamalinov. Um, I want to commend the Member of Parliament for Tamalinov, Honorable Elijah Alassan Saibu Suini, for the works he has been doing, especially in my community. Which community is that? Full community, Full. which is part of the 11 electoral areas in okay. the Tamil North constituency. Yes, actually, before Honorable Alaji Alasa Saibu came as an MP, of course, we never knew that MPs could lobby with private or NGOs to bring development to the people. This is what our opponents are confused with. Because when you go to the full community, you realize that full community has a clinic which is being coordinated and brought in by Honorable Elijah Lassan Saibu Sohini. When you go to full community, 
Fall Community has one of the envious primary and junior high school, which is by kind courtesy, Honorable Elijah Alassane Saibo Suini. Before he became MP of Tamale North constituency, we could boast of only some 11 unit classroom blocks, which children used not to attend because of the dilapidated nature of the classroom blocks. But today, if you go to Fall Community, and you go to that very school, you realize that even people from private schools are attending those schools. And that is a very good work of the Honorable MP. Now, I want to throw a challenge to Honorable Abre, who has refused and disrespected the people of Tamale North and has not appeared to this, to this, this uh, community manifesto, that he should come out boldly and tell us, since the days of he holding the bag of the regional minister till today, in four community, how many people has he helped in terms of education or in terms of grabbing a job for themselves? If he's able to do it, then that is why we'll give him a listening ear to talk to us. Thank you. All right. We'll, we'll take three more and then we'll listen to um, the Honorable Minister. And today is Amatu. And you know, Bona Bobakar is Sadia. Can you not talk with electoral area? I'm a yellow honorable member, my own number, Shati. Tamale Nofza. Nta honorable member ma won nka na ka tban ni MP Miara Shipton ma. Nta honorable member ma won nka na ka tban ni hon eh MP ni to zon o pala nzuya ngun shabaka pala nan. Nta eh MPP bro ma o di yale ni eh pal sanga ba man ma Abraham Malle be MPP government Malle. Nta de ben nan ye mangle. Then a nut ten mission, better aim to home robble man the yell sham, better womb the sham. The Daniela, Bemini, and Zoom Lion, Nam and Ginny, and Tossi, Halka Palama at the man, the Madden Zoka Wabga Gomlan, Tim Man, the Palama. And Tabin Shad and Lam Denka and Yelnella. Chogui letter area, home robble member man and number show me a ship titty. Come by Shukur Durtiti, come by Shukur Durtiti, and Taha. Tamale North, I could touch on electoral area, Shelley, that the Honorable Member Marco of Locarapuni. And there are all number shots at the constituency of Martinagin, and Pisoko, no flap, Labber Shabbat, the constituency war. And there are my number shan in Yelnella, the Puya Kappa, and Pima Pam. No poor Mansham, catch a corn in jail, only not part the Tamale North constituency ma. Now to one young Walco G. Kachaka December seventh, Catalan love so namni. Ntaha Mpaya. All right, and, and this lady is also speaking about the good work which um, the honorable member of parliament has done in the constituency. She said you cannot go to any electoral area without seeing the good work of the um, the honorable member. And she's saying thank you to him for all the work he has done and praying that um, he'll continue to stay in office so he can do some more. All right. Thanks for some too. Yalani <laughs> For the students. In here, this last time I'm done, I can't. Me woman, the cover yard, but me the yellow shaman, me yellow, yes, I shall ding, ding, yes, I shall, Zampa Opolo. Can Lanzana can claim Vata and Pio. Oh, woman, you can't be any NDC can have power. Nyala ni biso wun sabi yia wun. Ne ndi si kana pawa. Tiba yin chan te shari yun wun. Ni te shari. Ni si yin yo fis ka chan wun. Ni re nyala free zante ti. Ami yama le nyala be. Pa an solo. Nde mvo ala te empi wun. Ami yitu pala ma. Wun ni nyen nvo so wun nang dal ma be. Ben yen nvo so nang dal ma. Ami. Bunya ba ima wansa ne unsu palama na ngwa. So, nuko meche zambe ma mpaya. All right. So she says that the member of parliament has done more than words can express, and she also says that she was supposed to go to school last year, um, but the member of next year, 
But the member of parliament um, helped her with a mattress because she did not have a mattress to go. Okay, I missed some of that. She's supposed to go next year. All right. I think what she said was that before she went to Nobi School, which is one of the secondary schools in the uh, constituency, he heard of a fire outbreak in the school. And uh, the information she had was that I assisted the school with mattresses and okay. many other okay. things to keep life going in the school. Okay. But next year, she's going to the university, and she has heard that the NDC is promising a free academic user yes. fee. And she wants to know if it is true because okay. she has written the uh, uh, work this year yeah. and she's going to the tertiary Thank you so much. next year. <laughs> much so that's appreciated. It. All right, we'll take a last uh, comment and then we'll okay. come to you. Yes, please. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. So my name is Hamza Alifa Tugamda and I'm the president for the Northern Regional Youth Network. And I'm speaking as a neutral person. Okay, so first of all, I'd like to commend Honorable Allah Sansuin for his great work. I've been seeing what he's doing, his projects and everything. So the reason why I'm here is that we organized a program some time ago, and it was time with the P uh, PMs, the parliamentary candidates, for about eight constituency. And he was the only one that showed up. This shows that, this shows that his, co his dedication and commitment to young people is something that we have to consider. So I'll commend everyone to re-elect him as the MP for the Tambalino. Thank you. All right, thank you. And, and that will be our final um, comment from here. Um, all right, I, I, I see someone is, is um, distributing five Ghana City notes to people who come and speak. Uh, uh, he'll, he'll take it back. All right, so, so that was the fifth person. We, we have to come and listen to our leaders, and then we'll come back to the microphone. So, okay. All right. Honorable Al Hassan Sweeney, first of all, thank you for being here today. It's a pleasure to be uh, with you. I think that um, what you saw is a cultural thing. When someone, you know, dances or says something that is pleasant. Uh, oh, that is exciting. It is cultural for, uh, you know, people on looking to, uh, we call it table malare. So it's not somebody giving people five CDs for speaking. Just so that it's not misunderstood out there because people are watching. It's, uh, I don't see anyone giving anybody money. I've seen that the lady um, who came to speak earlier, someone was happy and gave her money. And this one to another person may have just given her. That's the only thing I have seen. I don't know if you have seen any other. No, no, no. Yeah, so I don't want it misconstrued yeah, no, as if yeah. people are being given understood. some five Ghana CD to say the things understood. that they have said. Understood. Yes, I just thought that it should be clear. Because this is on national TV, yeah, and you know the things understood. that can happen. I mean, again, um, in your intro, you uh, said I've been winning this seat since creation, since it was created. But I actually came in 2016. That was the first time I won this seat to become the member of parliament. And so I'm going for the third time uh, now. Uh, so I've just done two terms in parliament. I'm ending my second term. My first time term was in 2017. And then my second term started in 2021, which will uh, come to an end in 2024. And inshallah, with the uh, support of the people of Tamalinov, I am very confident that the third term will begin in 2025. <laughs> And another, another common mistake that is, being, that is usually made because of the name of the constituency is referring to the constituency as part of the greater Tamale metropolis area. Uh, Tamale North is actually not under Tamale metropolitan area. And I think it's important because sometimes it confuses policymakers, uh, you know, in the national capital when it's they are making decisions. The no, area. it is under the San Argo district. So okay. we have two assemblies in greater Tamale. We have two assemblies. You have the Tamale Metro Assembly and you have the Sanargo Municipal Assembly. So these two assemblies have two constituencies each under them. So you have the Tamale Central and Tamale South under the Tamale Metropolitan Area. Okay. And then you have the Sanargo Constituency and the Tamale North Constituency under the Sanargo Municipal okay, Assembly. Okay. So that is, that is the, the, the confusion. I just thought that I needed to use this platform to, you Thank know, you. Um, uh, clarify. clarify so yeah. that uh, people, you are not the only person who has made that. A lot of people, even in policy, 
uh, at policy level, sometimes lump Tamale North together with Tamale Metro, and sometimes we struggle. Because you go to Tamale Metro, and they say you are not under them. And you go to San Argo, and then whatever you know, policy intervention that is there is only sent to the San Argo uh, constituency because it is assumed that because they share the same name, then it is the same Understood. thing. So I just thought I should clarify that. Understood. But uh, I want to express my heartfelt uh, gratitude to all those who have spoken and those who have not had the opportunity to speak. Uh, and in that regard, uh, my heartfelt gratitude is to the people of Tamalinov generally. I think that um, their support, their prayers, and their encouragement is what keeps me going every time. And it is what gives me sleepless nights because of the confidence that they have in me, it makes it impossible for me to shun my responsibilities because I know that when I do, I'll be disappointing a greater number of people. And so I want to thank them so much for that confidence that they continue to repose in me and, that, and the support of prayer that they always uh, offer me. So you heard them. I mean, the truth is that um, I took over, like I said, in 2017. Now, I started uh, showing interest in becoming a member of parliament of this constituency somewhere around 2015 when the NDC uh, opened nominations for people to file uh, to represent the party in the 2016 general elections. And at the time, um, with the opportunities available to me, the way I demonstrated my ability to you know, represent the constituency adequately and especially because my government was in power, was to champion development for the constituency. And sometimes I expect that uh, because I have noticed my opponent tries to imitate me a lot, even in dressing and the choice of music that he plays on his campaign ground, I see he tries to imitate me. And I admire him for that because one of the greatest things for me in life is to meet someone who says, because of you, I was inspired to also do something. So I like that he's taking a lot of inspiration from me. But I will wish that he will understand that it is not time for him to compete yet. It's just time for him to continue to learn. So I would have expected that because his party is in power, he would have used that opportunity you know, to show how willing and able he will be when he is elected. Because I did that in 2015. In 2015, before I even became a, you know, a member of parliament, I did a lot of things, but there were five remarkable things that I used the opportunities I had at the time to do. Okay. One, I started the construction of two classroom blocks. One at the Faux Zion, that is in Faux. One here, which is just, you know, uh, uh, opposite us, the Nyan Shago, uh, Our Lady Park. And then a dormitory block at Nobisco the school that the lady spoke about. I think the, the classroom block is there. Yeah, so the classroom block is there. The so these there. were the, the, the things I did even before I became a member of parliament. I went to get this fund. This was in 2015. This was in 2015, 2016. Okay. I went to get fund and I lobbied for these projects to be brought. I practically brought them to the assembly and you know supervised the awarding of those contracts together with the DCE at the time. So we had the full Zion you know, school, we had this particular block, and then we had the dormitory block at Nobi School. That was my way of, you know, demonstrating to the people what I wanted to do if I was given the opportunity. The second thing I did was that I lobbied the Ghana Education Service at the time through the Minister of Education. My good friend and brother, Samuel Okujeta Blocker, was Deputy Minister of Education at the time, and got the Kalipohani Senior High School a bus, a school bus, which is still there. That is what I did with my government in power to show that if given the opportunity, I was going to represent them well. And that's why I'm saying that I was, I was expecting that the, you know, my younger brother who is trying to imitate me would have imitated me in that direction. And perhaps that would have given him some mileage. I also brought about you know, electrification into some of our communities. In fact, this community, Nyanshago, did not have, you know, uh, was not connected to the national grid at the time that I came. They had electricity all right, but many of the homes that had electricity had actually connected from the quarters and they, they buried the wires, you know, into their homes. That was the situation when I came in 2015. Which year was it? 2015? This was 2015, 2016. Before, you came before I became member of parliament. Okay. I lobbied and got my very good friend and brother. I think we put some of it on the screen right. so we can yeah. see. So those are some of the pictures the that you see. Yes. So 
I mean, these are more, these are new ones that I've done since I became member of parliament. I've done a number of electrical what station projects. Now? This is a water project, okay. you know, a borehole and water project. This is an extension that we did recently uh, at the Paumo area. That is well, the Nantong Paumo Kuta. area. Now, we've yes. been to other constituencies yeah. in the region. Yeah. And one of the issues that have come up consistently is the issue of portable water. Yeah. Um, is this still an issue in this constituency? It's a very big issue, but I'll come to that. I was just telling you about how I ensured that this area became, uh, you know, connected to the national grid. Then I also uh, ensured that the Kalpohane rural community also was connected to the national grid. And then the Kamvili uh, Paumo was also connected to the national grid. That was before I even became member of parliament. And I started a major road, the third ring road in Tamale. That is around the uh, King David area. This was part of the government emergency road project. And through the support of His Excellency John Dramani Muhammad then, uh, and working with the urban roads at the time, it was awarded, you know, and the work had started. Unfortunately, this government, when they came in 2017, suspended works uh, for about a year uh, through activism in parliament, together with even the local chiefs. One time I had to transport the chiefs of the area to parliament to meet with the road minister. And the road contract was re-awarded to the regional vice chairman of the NPP, unfortunately. And it has become a political road. I understand most uh, of the money required for the road project has been paid to the regional chairman, yet it remains undone. Uh, and the people uh, are suffering for it. It's so these were some of the interventions they finished, I used. They haven't continued since? They have continued, but not to the level that it was supposed to go. And up till today, seven years on, I mean, a road project that was supposed to take 18 months, seven years on, they have not even tarred the road yet. I mean, it is... Uh, what are the reasons you've been given? I, I, well, sometimes I ran into the contractor who is the original vice chairman of the NPP uh, on my way to Accra on board flights, and then he complains that he hasn't been paid. I meet the minister in parliament, and I, I, I confront the minister, and the minister also gets angry and tells me that he's lying. I've paid him all the money that he, he needs. So uh, MPP, two MPP people, since they are, not, they are not trustworthy, the you don't know who to believe. Has he because shown you any evidence of payment? The, the point is that NPP cannot be relied upon. So if the two of you, them cannot agree on one thing, it makes it easy for me not to believe any of them. But the point is, I have always insisted that that road network is important because it is one of the three third ring roads in, in, in Accra. It goes round the whole of Tamale. Yes, it goes round the whole of Tamale. And it, it helps to, it would have helped to decongest the capital city. And perhaps if they had concentrated on it, they would not have needed to provide that flyover. That is rather creating needless traffic and congestion in the uh, central business district. Because it is these ring roads that open up communities and also open up the city, especially when vehicles are coming from Accra or coming from Bolga. They will not have to go through the central business district if they have no, if they have no business uh, to do there. But unfortunately, that is what they have chosen to prioritize. So these were some of the projects All now right. that I used you know, to uh, convince the people that I, I, I could represent them well. Right. And thanks be to God, they elected me. And ever since, by the grace of God, we haven't disappointed. All right. Now, l let's come to some of the questions that were asked. Um, the, the first question, I believe, was on education. What your plans are for education should you retain your seat? So before that question, you also talked about the issue of water. I recall again that um, through the support of um, some NGOs and government at the time, we replaced the, pipe, uh, the pipes around the full area just so that we could expand them because the pipes that, that, that were laid um, perhaps at the time considered the population and so they were smaller. But by 2015, 2016, it had become apparent that there was a need for the pipelines to be expanded. And so I ensured that by 2016, we had replaced almost all the pipes in the full community. We also laid some pipes around the uh, Banyamle uh, area. In fact, we even uh, constructed some public stand pipes. And this was a time that the water situation was not this dire. You know, we used to have at least uh, communities enjoy water uh, flow at least once or twice a week. But now, in fact, in my area, I was just told by one of my boys this morning that for like seven months now, we have not had water flowing through the taps at home. And so that is the situation that almost every home is faced with. Unfortunately, 
um, in this part of Tamale, the water table, it's a bit low, you know. And so a number of times I have come with, you know, NGOs and I've even with my own initiative tried to drill boreholes. But we, we, they either hit, you know, an empty well or sometimes when they get the water, it is salty, it's saline. And so it is not, you know, conducive. For use. What is the Ghana but Water Company telling you? Nevertheless, we have been able to drill a number of boreholes. I think about 20 boreholes in different parts of the uh, community. Now, a couple of times I've engaged the water company. Their main problem is with water supply. Our only source of water is the Nauni Dam. And over the years, it has been serving the people of Tamale. But Tamale is one of the fastest growing cities not only in Ghana, but Africa. And so because of that, the source of water has become inadequate to meet every home's need. And so they began with the rationing. But even the rationing, because of population and expansion, it has practically become impossible for them to ration it effectively for every home to be served. And that is why in the previous NDC government, there was the idea of, you know, adding the Yapi uh, 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 water, uh, the white volta, to the Nauni, you know, water source. So we had begun engagement with uh, development partners. I recall that uh, a proposal was even presented in Parliament for a water treatment plant to be, you know, planted on the Yapi, uh, the white volta, so that it could help treat the water from the white volta so that it could complement the water that comes from the Dalong area, the Nauni area, uh, to make the water more available to the water company to be able to uh, serve the communities. The NPP government, when they came into power, saw the good in that initiative and actually decided, like they always do, to revise the terms and conditions of that project. It was uh, withdrawn from parliament and represented. Fortunately, all the four members of parliament at the time, in fact, I remember Honorable Inu Safusini was then representing Tamale Central. Honorable Harun Idrisu was a minority leader, and myself included, and Honorable Ibi Fuseni. Even though we were not members of the Water Resources Committee in parliament, we all took interest in the meetings of that committee because we were concerned about the water situation. I recall a couple of times where we went to the meetings and made representations for some towns to be captured in the contract document so that they could okay. be covered. Unfortunately, Parliament approved it in 2020, I think in 2018, 2019. Okay. Till date, they have done nothing about it. They claim because of their reckless management of the economy and the, in a, uh, the, the inability of donor partners to support them. They are not able to raise the needed funds okay. to carry out now, that project. This, this issue was raised in Tamale Central and South as well. Mm. That's why I asked you. Yeah. Um, but in Tamale Central, I believe, um, what the Honorable Member of Parliament over there said that he has, with support from, I think, other partners, been able to drill about 86 boreholes, mm. seven the entire electoral area, so about yeah. four in each electoral area. Yeah. You're saying that the boreholes here sometimes produce water which is too salty for yeah. use. Yeah. Is there the possibility of treatment of this water so that it can be used domestically? I'm asking this because you know, water is a very basic need. That's true. I mean, like I said, I mean, because of the challenge here, we have had to even donate some of the borehole offers to our uh, sister uh, constituencies. But I've done about 25 of them where the water is uh, uh, usable. For example, just uh, so a couple of days. Usable. They are usable. They are okay. usable. It's not. It's not always the case that okay. it is. It is not usable. I'm okay. just saying that we could have drilled more if we had a better water table. But there are times that they drill and it is just salty. There are times that they drill and it's an empty borehole. But okay. where we have been able to find water, like in the Watke area, we have about four or five boreholes there. In Kalpoheni, we have about five or so boreholes there. In Fo, we have about three or four boreholes there. In the, uh, what do you call it, Wovo Gumani, we have about two boreholes there. So where we are able to get water that is not salty, you and the well that is not dry, All we right. make sure that Let's talk we, about education. We, we drill it. Let's talk about education. So I think that the question was, what are your plans for education for the young people in the constituency? Well, education is one of my focus areas in this constituency. I often tell people that 
Um, my dad used to tell us that he has no inheritance that he's leaving behind for us to take after his demise. And the only inheritance he has for us is education. And I see the wisdom in it because I'm a beneficiary and I'm a living testimony of how much education can give you. And that is why I focus too much on education in this constituency. Uh, because whatever inheritance, if he had left behind, wouldn't have been able to secure me a seat in the Parliament of Ghana. But the education that he gave me is the reason why we are having this conversation and I'm sharing this platform with you. So in the area of education, I mean, I make sure that I get myself involved in every department of education, be it uh, extracurricular activities, be it the construction of infrastructure. And that's why they will tell you, if you go to the Chago Electoral Area, for example, we have renovated about three of the oldest uh, junior high schools in the constituency uh, because it had become dilapidated and it was a demotivation to the young people in the area to even go to the classrooms. The teachers were also not encouraged to put up their best because of the you know, uh, environment within which that they had to take. So we had to renovate those blocks to bring it up to uh, standard. If you go to Kalpohene, there's a school called uh, Adabia. You know, we have constructed one of the you know, nicest you know, blocks that you will find because this is a classroom is that where we the, finished. Is that yeah, I think that's it. I mean, it has oh. tiles in there. It has, uh, uh, you know, fans in there. And it came with furniture. It came with uh, offices and also a toilet facility attached to it with an overhead water tank. Uh, so that's it. I mean, the furniture, it came like this. That's how we constructed it together with the Qatar Charity Foundation. We did this in, in, in Kalpani. Is uh, this a JHS? Uh, this is a JHS. Yes, yeah, okay. this is a primary school. All right. Uh, a, a basic school. But Th this, same, this same block is okay. also uh, in Kamvali uh, uh, at a school called Zamzamia. We have the same block also Replicated. at Zamzamia. Yeah. Okay, but so, go, going into the future, yeah. I think that's what his question was. Yes. Going into the future, what plans do you have for young people and education? So um, I'll, do, I'll dwell a bit on what we have been doing because that, provide, that becomes a foundation t upon which we will do more. Uh, f we notice that when people go on break, they often loiter around and parents are not able to control them. So every time they are on break, especially at the basic level, we, we organize extra free extra classes for them in various uh, communities. We make sure that we have about three different centers where these children go for education. When they are going to write their, their exams, we support them with all the equipment that they need to write their exams. And we also give them packet money because we know how uh, hunger can. Money. Yeah, we do. We do. Because sometimes some of them come from homes where in the morning they can't even get wow. breakfast before they go to, to, to write their exams. So when they are preparing, to, we don't do it every day. But we are okay. saying that during the exam period, that we don't want any child to suffer because he didn't have breakfast before going to the exam center. So we make sure that we give them some money that they can buy cocoa on their way to the exam center so that at least they can uh, uh, write and focus. And, and this and, is during and, uh, their final during exams? During their final exams. Yeah, that's I what see. we do for them after we do the extra classes for them. Then we also uh, ensure that we support them, especially those who are going to the tertiary level, with their fees. I mean, fees has become one of the biggest you know, budget item on my district assembly's common fund. And if you go to the assembly, they will show you all the records. Sometimes we spend, fees. yes, we spend over 100, 200,000 Ghana cities of the common fund just to support uh, students who are going to the tertiary level. That is why we are very happy that the NDC has adopted the policy of making sure yeah, that admission fees, I mean, these are some of the checks on, that are issued, screen. yes. You know, and, and there are records to show how these disbursements are done. Okay. You know, and, and this is from the Common Fund. Yes, yes. Now, yes. I, not to cut you, but I've heard a few of the members of Parliament also say that they pay school fees. Yeah. But the more I hear about it, the more I wonder how sustainable it is. Absolutely. To be able That's why I'm telling you. That's why I'm saying that I am excited now that the mm -hmm. NDC has adopted the uh, policy of ensuring that admission fees will no longer be paid by students who have admission to go to the tertiary level. Because that admission fee for tertiary education has you know, disadvantaged a lot of people and truncated the education of many in our you know, communities. Sometimes they are not able to get the admission fee. But you agree with me, we all were in school with people that once they got the admission fee, struggled throughout the, the, the academic you know, uh, calendar. And there were times they would come and sack them from writing exams. But they will still finish the course somehow. 
But once they don't get the admission fee to get into the school, then they are never able to get the uh, education that is required. So this is a picture on the screen, which I believe um, exactly. So of some of the this young was people. this was actually in 2022, I think. Okay. When I started the free, the full payment of admission fees for uh, uh, you know uh, students that gained admission into the tertiary level to pursue nursing to pursue medicine related courses and engineering so i i ensured that those students had their full fees paid for them so they could report to school because i thought that the admission fee usually disadvantages those who are unable to pay uh, to enter to have uh, that 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 training and this was uh, done at the full park and we selected students from across the you know constituency from different electoral areas and that is why i am happy that uh, perhaps as part of this initiative the greater party ndc has seen the need to adopt this policy of paying full fees for students that have admission into the tertiary uh, level now going forward what i want to focus on uh, uh, inshallah, when the NDC wins, and I also win again for my third term, is to support not only the infrastructure of education in the constituency, but and not only the students, but to also focus on the teachers who are doing a lot. They're making a lot of sacrifices. In fact, for example, the extra classes that I organize for uh, these uh, peoples uh, came about as a result of some teachers voluntarily offering their services for free. You know, and so these are teachers who care a lot about the welfare of these students and make a lot of sacrifices to produce, you know, uh, better educated people than themselves. And so my next level of intervention will focus more on supporting teachers in our various, uh, 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 you know, electoral areas. For example, when we build, when we build clinics, you know, like we have done, in what K, through the partnership of uh, some NGOs, we support those clinics with um, uh, sleeping quarters. So we have for the nurses, for the medical staff. Okay. So what I think that moving forward we have to be doing is also to be looking at supporting teachers with some of their you know accommodation needs. Even if we cannot attach okay. the quarters to the school, we All can right. support them is, by is way of giving them some rent support and rent. Yes, this is a, a right. nurses' quarters for the working. And nurses, we have like three of this in the constituency. Speaking of nurses' quarters and, and healthcare workers, yeah. one of the issues that we have heard about, I mean nationally and even in Tamale here, is employment for nurses and doctors who have successfully finished their training but are currently at home and cannot get placement. Um, can, can you speak to that? Is that an issue in this constituency? It's a very, very big issue. I mean, we have people who have completed since 2001, 2002, who remain unposted. Yeah. And now the sad part of it is that there are stories of how people in authority, in government, are selling some of these placements. They are selling, selling it. it, yes. What, what does that mean? What happens is that people have to pay, in some cases, 60,000 Ghana, 70,000 Ghana to do what? before they are placed in the health facility to provide health care. Sometimes, I am told, you know, the general explanation usually is that, oh, they do their placements according to year groups. And so they have done placement for, say, 2020 or 2019. So those who have graduated in 2021 should wait. They will be placed later. But I've been shown evidence of people who graduated even last year, but have, who have got paid. Placement. Yes, have paid money. And monies. who are they paying? Some people who pose as, you know, uh, people in government connected to the powers that be. What's the nature of evidence you've seen? Payments, text message payments, and placements actually given. You know, and so it is sad that we reduce our system to this level. Why, why should you deceive people with a so-called allowance so much that you are not even paying? And you take away the automatic posting of teachers and automatic posting of nurses. In fact, many okay. of us, myself included, were forced to go to training okay. college because at the time there was that assurance okay. that once you graduate, you will be posted and okay. you will start earning now, salary. This, this, this is a national issue. Yes. And, and it's, it's been a, a public, in, in the public discourse for a while now. Yeah. But what you're telling us now yeah. is new to me. I've not heard, uh, I mean, we cannot fact check it right now. Um, if in fact people have paid monies yeah. 
to the so, tune so, of 60,000. So that's an assignment leads. I'm giving you. Yes, to the Just tune put of your ears on the ground. So if you want can, some leads, so I can give yes, you some we will, leads. Yes, we will rely yes, on you yes, for evidence yes, to, to yes, this assertion you've yes, made. Yes, because yes, for yes. now, we cannot, you know, yes. we cannot If you want some it. leads, and I'm telling you that if you, if, you, if you give the people the opportunity here to speak, they will even show you some of their family members or relatives or friends that they know. Who have paid not, yes, who have paid not only for jobs in the health sector, but in other sectors. They are being sold. Job placements are sold under and this And you can government. prove this. I am telling you, there is evidence of people who are paid. In fact, my chairman was telling me the other day of an MPP man whose sons, who, who paid for their son and has been given uh, employment, but they don't even know the department where he has or she has to go and work. So it's, it's common knowledge. It's common knowledge uh, in the country. I'm surprised you haven't heard it yet. And I thought TV3 had long ears. We rely on facts, <laughs> only the facts, and we don't right. have the facts, and so we yeah. cannot speak to it. Yeah. Um, but you, you said you had someone here who could who could prove it. Did I'm you simply say that? saying that. Give. Do you see? Can you see the hands up? The hands, it is common knowledge. You, 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 people are you paying. Have such people evidence. are paying. People right. are paying you know for what? the jobs. Let me, let me speak to this young man. Well, he's in NDC attire. You may even think that it is an NDC this thing. But I'm telling you, just open it up and you will see. Including immigration, have you heard? They are telling you, they are paying for those placements. Um, young man, can you speak to the issue we are talking about now? Yeah, I will speak to that Okay, I go ahead. You can, you can speak to that money. That's fine. Answer is, Jama. To pay a cup of tea. On a year to year to a share to super gear. When you are in last year, you can call me and train me. Sister, sister, I can't be done. I suppose when my money comes, problem. No, you don't know you are five stars. Me, do you? I don't know what chin chin. I will be done. Man, you know, I will call that chin chin. Because we know you have five stars, because that's it. Our friends, you have a couple of people. We have a lot of people. Sister Raki, you have a lot of There you are. So you have a lot of people. It is common knowledge on the streets. People are paying. So what he's telling you is simply that. So we need to translate what he says. You said you know someone personally who was asked to pay. Your sister. Yes. She was asked to pay 5,000 cities. And when she couldn't pay... I no. told her don't, she, don't he pay. Told her don't pay. You told her not yes. to pay. Go and do business. Uh, that use the five thousand. Use the five thousand to do business. Yes. Because but who asked paid. her to pay that money? Uh, the, uh, the health sector. Those who are the health employers. sector workers. Yes. Those who are responsible for the yes. employment. Yes. They said she should pay five thousand. Pay five thousand. And you said she shouldn't pay. She should use it for business. Yes. But her friend paid. Yes. Is that what you said? Yes. And got placement. You know, get placement. Where Even though she paid, she still didn't get. You know, get. I, what what are you? Somebody showing is, sh me? is showing you. Somebody is not. This is not my phone. Someone okay. just brought it. They paid. They paid fifty thousand. That's the a, that's the payment slip he's showing you. Microphone. Fifty thousand. So you placement. actually paid to a bank. A bank. A branch. The person sent accounts. GCB Bank. Yes. P please, can you speak speak to it? What yeah. what what have you shown me just yes. now? <laughs> I paid fifteen thousand for my brother's employment. This thing. You paid fifteen thousand. Yeah. Fifteen. Okay. For teaching. Teaching. To be placed as a teacher. Yes. That's the evidence there. Yes. The yes. Certificate, everything is there. You can see. And the charts, you can see who we pay to. And the placement has been done. That's, yes. That's what they have reduced this country to. The NPP government, we need to rescue this country from their hands. They are taking us to levels that are just okay. abysmal. All right. So I, I have just seen this. And, and let me explain to our viewers who are watching. I have just seen, um, I think, a, a, a banker's draft yeah. um, receipt of 15,000 Ghana cities paid for the set purpose, but we still need to verify this and make sure that it's correct information, and then we'll share subsequently on this platform. But okay. thank you for bringing this to our notice. Um, my producers behind the desk will take it, and then we'll verify this and bring you the accurate Evidence. information. More, on more, this more testimony. Yeah, a friend of mine, he also paid ten thousand for local government appointment for his wife, but unfortunately, when the appointment came, it was a fake appointment. So even up to now, he's still chasing them for their money, and they are not willing to pay their money back to him. Wow. Yes. Okay, so, so, so there, are, there, there, are, there are two issues That's here. Right. There are people who are pretending to be able to place you, and then they take your money, and they don't place you. And people who are actually taking money and giving such placements in government organizations. I mean, it, not to belittle the matter, but it begs the question, 
You know, if you have 15,000 cities, like the gentleman said, if you have 5,000 cities to pay for a job, why not consider using it for to start exactly. a business? That's what um, he in, told in, his sister. Yeah, that's what you told your sister. Yeah. So, so we, we will verify these things that we have received and seen today and bring you the full information after we have fact-checked Let's it. hear this lady. But, I think she has something thank you, to say. Thank you for, sh for sharing with us. And since we are back to the microphones, I think we should activate it. So we'll <laughs> take three comments from here, and then three from here, and then we'll come back. All right. Please, more testimony that my friend also paid 900 plus, 9,000 plus for nice. I, I, I the certificate. Or, uh, placement, placement. Appointment. Okay. She paid 9,000 plus In which, for, for which job? Teaching. teaching. To become a teacher? Yes, yes. She paid 9,000 plus. Yes, a friend of mine. And and how much is she paid as a teacher? Now, total that, and that's more than the allowance that the person may have exactly. received in school. Can you I, imagine? I don't know the amount they pay her. I don't but know. But if you, you have 9,000 cities to pay to be placed as a teacher, to be paid less than that amount of money, I mean, how many months do you have to work as a teacher to earn that amount of money? That About three know. months. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, okay, um, pertaining to that issue, we actually do not want to be talking about th those issues. I am a frustrated unemployed nurse who completed in You're 20... nurse? Yes, I completed in 2020. Up to now, I'm still in the house. Yeah. For them to Four just years. call me one day, that I should bring 5,000 for them to what? To give me appointment, which I couldn't... Who I mean, called afford. you? One guy, he called me, that I should bring 5,000. Where was he calling from? He was calling from Savulugu, that he is a, a, a middleman to that. So I should bring 5,000 Ghana series for them to post me. I told him that I don't have that money because I'm not working. I'm in the house. So he said, if I know somebody who has the money, I should what? Link the person to him. I linked one, one guy. He was in my class. Now, my, my friend has worked for more than one year now. They are paying the guy. The, the guy paid 5,000 plus, and they posted him. So with this issue, we actually do not want to, also, uh, to, to be talking about this issue. It's very, very heartening. It's very, very painful. Thank you very much. Wow. Okay, we'll take one more from here and then we'll take three from here. Yes, ma'am. Now. Uh, brother, the cathedral local government, 150 million. Please speak into the microphone so that we can hear you. Uh, young brother, engineer brother, cathedral local government, 150 million. 15,000 15, 15, cities. 15, your, your junior brother paid. Local yes, government. Yes. We pay for him. You paid 15,000 cities for him yes, to Yes, we pay for him. Local government. In local yes. government. Yes. To get an employment in local government. Yes, yes. And you paid 15,000 to who? Yes. To who? We pay for them. Who, who asked you to pay? The they asked man. us to pay. The Somebody man. at local government. Yes. Asked you to pay 15,000. Yes. How did they reach your brother? Why did they call him? Or they were calling everyone? They were calling everybody to come and pay for me. There are three people. Had your brother already applied to work there? Yes. So they called those who had applied? Yes, there are three. Three of them? Yes. Three of them paid or three of them called? No, three of them paid their money. Three of them paid 15,000 yes. each? Each. 45,000? Yes. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, I'm surprised you, are, you, are, you, sound, you sound, you know, shocked about this. But this is common knowledge. Well, it is shocking. The corruption and the, you know, the debasement of governance H is at on. a different level. Let, let these gentlemen speak, and then I'll come back to you. Yes, sir. That's why. I'm going to talk about the education of this year. I'm going to talk about education of this year. I'm going to talk about the education of this year. I'm going to talk about the education of this year. I'm going to talk about the education of this year. I'm going to talk about the education of this year. I'm going to talk about the education of this year. I'm going to talk about the education of this year. We even uh Paloe machines ma or board but had to eh when both men send the mumbo yara was a santa for someone to the um put uh present a letter to smart material let alone to bar of woman that you poke up papa me or no shangoma do me I can at you what will go on to near deity command man yellow tila tila ran yellow manual man machine one one point five I'm a zoo zoo yeah, I got ten thousand. I got one thousand. I got two hundred machine man. In that same machine, down here eight hundred Ghana series. So I got four thousand. I got two hundred machines man. Deep on the swan, it is on the pregnant. I got two hundred machines man. The sort of poor local power pump. Ni olang pong mam pump. Ti has kuru mam oral hati to posia. Kalam metish kuru biri ni ansha shukuru. Dalaru nuviye tele karali shukuru pelle. 
all right, and he's thanking the Member of Parliament for supporting their businesses. All right. Well, yes, he was sir. just saying that um, uh, it is not only those who are in the formal education that I support, and that even those who are into skills development, I support them. He is, uh, I think, the president of the Ghana uh, Tailors Association, the regional president, and he was okay. just uh, giving okay. regional. He was just giving a testimony of how many times I have supported them, and also the Taylor's Association. The Taylor's Association okay, with, with, with funding. Yeah, no, with uh, their machines. I mean, okay. so he was giving the so cost can you speak to of the, the, the machines. On the, screen? the cost of yeah. So okay. these are some of the tools that I give young men and women sometimes who are you know uh, using skills uh, to self-employ. You know, so Which we have vulcanizers, you have uh, brick lay, uh, what do you tile laying machines there, you have the industrial sewing machines, you have um, um, uh, brick laying equipment, uh, plumbing equipment, and all that. This was, uh, I think, about two years ago. All right. Yeah, and then we are going to do that again on uh, Thursday. We'll do it on this pack. I hope you'll be that's tomorrow. We'll Is be it here. tomorrow? We'll yeah, tomorrow we'll be we'll doing be some distribution of some of these okay. items again okay. to some of the okay. artisans in our But when I come back to you, I'd like you to speak to the woman who spoke about nursing and healthcare and the support you are giving to the women. Right. I'd like right. you to speak more on that. Um, but um, gentlemen, just, yeah, please, you have um, the microphone. Good morning. Um, thank you for this opportunity. Um, it is of no doubt that right now, TV3 is the most attractive brand when it comes to uh, the media industry in Ghana. Um, TV3 has been doing a great work. Even though some particular people try to dent their image after working so hard professionally, but later they came back to you. Um, I have one thing for my colleague youth. It is very important for us to take interest in every national discussion. There, you will be Give, I mean, you'll be enlightened. you know what is going on so that no one will come and sit in your face and lie to you. Now, I've, I've realized something that, and it was made clear to me by the current president. A um, few months ago, some respected chiefs went to, uh, they paid visit to the president and they put on some Request. problems they have in their communities. I was shocked what the president told them. That he gave them a candidate, and they didn't vote his candidate. For that matter, he has forgotten about them. I'm telling you. That brought my mind, and I imagine that, okay, now in every constituency where the MP is not an NPP member, meaning the current president will make sure that he frustrates anything he's going to do in the community. So then I start to realize what our honorable MP is going through. And secondly, you see some projects happening in some consensus. They will say that where the MP is an NDC, they will say that no, that project is for assembly. It's not the MP. But places where the MP is an MPP, any project there is for the MP. <laughs> so when you are following this kind of thing, you know exactly what is going on. And you appreciate what the uh, opposition MPs are doing. Every small thing that they are doing, you appreciate it. And I've witnessed one or two helps from the Honorable MP. He has helped people that I know uh, in paying of their admission fee. He has helped them in gaining admissions. And other projects that they've showed on the skin, screen here, hospitals and other projects. So I'm just entreating my fellow youths. Let's pay attention to every discussion that is going on. Some of the things, when you, some of the things, when you hear it, you marvel. So what, that's the thing I have to say. So we should pay attention to national issues. Thank you. All right. So he's just encouraging young people to be more attentive and interested in in electoral issues and things about um, development across the nation, basically. Uh, all right. Uh, 
Just about. You be the final person. To, why don't you let the lady speak? Because well, uh, speak she was no. She, the, we are just taking one more, and I think she was there before you no, came. I was, I was here before. The, uh, Bo both of you can speak. Okay, okay. 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 Rundobit <laughs> Shall go be any Imani or no vitelemi. Cut to grab bag in the match, could be my shop be on a beach and shukur, but cut bag shall pun be and some bookum num. The Yabu Bubla Bununi, Carazo Chabukunama, Banama be manamai do had that at the Bayura, Kachara, Pernla, the Kabayan and the Mazo, those old Yinzan de la Che, at the Puho, Kapo Pam, no on to share to my Kasura now and throw, then now and chow, Lamna, twenty, twenty four, until the twenty, twenty five. All right, and he's talking about help for school children. So he spoke about renovation of some school blocks, as well as provision of sandals and school bags and other things that the children need to be able to go to school. All right, and our lady will be the final person to speak. Uh, his uh, honorable allergy bank loan interest rate maza wonda absorbly category constituency mo groups zaden da be tamale north constituency nti anda be ne category nti tiba loan ma repayment ma ka bi yura bi yo katlan pi anada electra alien nti tiba larma ona be da absorbly la la interest rate ma yo nti o mama de nyang nti atun ku ji grants shell no wo tra organize power ka bi kana ke katzan chef na facilitate chef ka kana to wo how to uh, make a uh, liquid soap, ka uh, uh, tamale no for power, kabo bohle benda yi in changi, ben bohle la eh uh, benma in changma. Dinyanga ona boda chakatla organize power, kote pa kamza five hundred Ghana cedis no zan chang until pili sochi and nangre biara biara. Dinyanga ona boda lanza fridge na minjina kati yule eh uh, electra areas ma until power kabo dia fridge na ma zungo a chambi yansi bisha bema na nangre daguli bokuhala ice cream ke kaku. Eh, eh, pure water. fridge, So the mal eh, tia pa amnete eh tamale north constituency. Ti yina enti nang campaign ma vien yenga enti ka ona bo lab jina duma enti sum kaso da tamale north constituency kare chang Tony and garden pumia opposition ko bi eighty years ago overflow bi la constitu eh electoral area kamza dusuru manama ambanama inyanza la platform mosuru kaso ya campaign ma yela so kamza dini yali. All right, um, just to summarize what she said, she's talking about um, help and assistance she, she and the women have received from the Honorable Member of Parliament. She talks about some loans, interest-free loans, which were given to them to do business and some grants. She also says they received refrigerators, um, for their businesses, um, for the women to do business. So they're doing pure water businesses. We see some of the refrigerators uh, displayed on the screen. They're brand new refrigerators. She also says that the member of parliament gave them 500 Ghana cities each uh, to the women to be able to... 
to do their, their business. They learned how to produce liquid soup, right? Uh, uh, for the women in the, in, the, uh, in the constituency, Tamale North. All right, thank you so much. So now uh, I'll come to the chairman, constituency chairman, and then we'll come back to you, Honorable, to wrap up. That's why. Uh, Babwar Labo, I'm a good lame. You buy a dog want to dog want to lie to laugh, but he cannot laugh. Aba is a dog, he want to laugh, but he cannot laugh. Uh -huh. uh, so, uh, never want to buy some yellow. Woman, never want to buy some yellow. Dog want to laugh, she cannot laugh. <laughs> Eh, appointment ma. Ama ben yelo ma mal pwe sonya ngo nyala wabu nira. Wada la control akora da appointment twenty five thousand. Ama kama linjer ngo yongo NDC na chimbesan kama wabu nung pola tuma. Nato ya do kam na tizan pia kam yo amo ka tizan pia kam yo yina ko paga an karaka ko tuma ma ne ya emi wab ganu tuma lala bishop tin yelo ma za ba dala tuma ma tizan ba kana ke ban karba to zo to ko bor ne ti yele yi za sa ne ya ne ba bor lab ka ko to longo ma te mi tin ma biso won dia jin tuma o bor kan no ko to kana den ko na ka kan na den ki kal yele ma za son tuma ma kal nya ala san so yin tuma nyer za don't buy in Yelma, you soon you are to yai, ki yell, what man in your shambala, no to shambala, no yenin for sombala. Then in Chakama, Mujiamo, and yenin for so when ye, when ye pilgu, and this pilgu, then in Pali, you know, but there are two young banishi tam shalmo, can by Genovoy. Am I not a Michele? The young son win the common in Pam Liampuni, continue Kalas and Sai Suyan Kukana. Mwana nye tuul mwana kana kanya ka empi kwa miyar kliniks. Miyar toles. Kara no vete re shukurte. Ka swang ni shukurbe he. Ka mba bwa nwa mpa ozo kata swang shukurbe ma. Ka mba liye kara chene mbjane. Isa doya. Ka kula nto o chang. Ba nga vi gati nywa ba nye no o gai. Cha ma nwa mwana te empi swang da swang tela. Kata chang shukur la. Ti liye kara chene ma. Mwana nto e ngwa. Ba nye ba shati ma kang ba zan swang da jifone. Zan mal ma na on de sogo. Thank you. All right. So, um, well, are you going to translate? Yes. You, oh, you, I thought it's going to be difficult. But my chairman was just saying that right. practically he's surprised that you, in his view, you are feigning ignorance about the job sales. He said feigning. Yes. He thinks that you shouldn't be aware of it. Because uh, the evidence in some cases, like he has said, is, is, is risky to show. Otherwise, he would have brought... A, a gentleman who is even an MPP person and his who neighbor paid 25, who paid 25,000 Ghana cities for a job at controller. Mm. But if the person comes here to say it, the next day he's going to, he is going to lose his it. job. And that there are many of such people that we speak to on a daily basis. But if we show them up on TV like that, they are likely to lose their jobs. And that is why it may be difficult. So he says that he is one of the founding members of NDC in the Northern region. And it's true, especially in the constituency. They were the founding members of the party in the constituency. And that at this stage, he should have been at home resting. But uh, he has seen the good works that I came to initiate in the constituency because it is in my time, even though he has been associated with all leaders uh, in the constituency in the past, that he's seen an MP construct uh, clinics and schools and renovate some and all that, and supporting school children to go for higher education. And he thought that it's important that he rises to support me and also uh, share in the history that we are making in the constituency so that in future when he's much older and uh, unable to move, 
the people we are helping to groom today will recognize him too when they speak of the good works that I did in my time and uh, uh, take care of him as well. So in, right. in, in, in summary, that's what All he right. said. But, yes. but just to um, wrap up our conversation today, I think one of the gentlemen asked you a question about a certain asphalted road. Mm -hmm. He wanted to know whether it was your work or the work of, of, the, of government. And then also I wanted you to speak to the women and nursing um, weighing issues that a woman spoke about that you had been assisting with. And yeah. then we'll wrap up the conversation. Yeah, so um, in fact, some of the things keep coming. Uh, I just got a note also from a brother who was reminding me about one of the biggest health screening uh, exercises that we did in Ghana. We brought about seven doctors uh, from Louisville at the time, uh, Louisville, Hosp Louisville Hospital in the United States of America. And they consulted for over 3,000 uh, citizens. And it was even reported in the newspapers in the USA and uh, in Ghana. So he was just reminding me to highlight that as well because uh, it is one of the biggest health screening exercises that has ever happened in Ghana. Now, on the issue of uh, child welfare centers, I went around the constituency one time, visited some of the health facilities, and I noticed that when the women went for weigh-in, they had no place to sit. In some cases, they sat under trees and in the sun and with the babies. And the health uh, attendants also sat with them there to provide the health services. So I decided to engage the district director of health to see how we could solve that problem. And then he came up with the concept of child welfare centers. And we have constructed a number of them across the constituency at the clinics. I'm sure if they have the pictures, they will show you. So now if you go to these health centers, the child welfare centers are there where we give them uh, furniture, we uh, construct uh, a shed-like uh, facility and provide it with funds properly ventilated so that the babies will no longer have to be exposed to the vagaries of the weather when they go for weighing. And it is uh, at the um, low-cost, Chogu low-cost clinic. We have one at the Tunaile uh, facility, and that's what the lady was speaking about. We have one at the Taha facility as well, and we are still doing some more. And uh, I mean, in the area of sanitation as well, I also noticed in one of my rounds that many of our public toilets that were built in the past were now in the middle of communities. And so homes that are closer to those uh, public toilets suffered the effects of rubber and you know, papers that, were, that are used in the toilet. And so uh, because the assembly often is not able to collect the refuse around those toilets, I decided that in the interim, we could uh, build walls around these public toilets because they were constructed in the open so that at least you could contain some of the rubbish in the uh, toilet area, in that space, so that it doesn't fly into the homes that are nearby. So, so far, uh, we did that for the Chogu uh, one. We also did one for um, the Gumani one. We are currently doing that. We, we also did one for the Fu one. And the number of the you know, uh, uh, public toilets have had this. Those that we are constructing, like the one that we did in uh, Kalapahini and then another one that we are currently doing at Taha, we make sure that it, it is, um, um, it, it, the, the sanitation is better. So we provide with water. Screen. Yes, I think that's one of it on the screen. We provide the, the water uh, flushing systems for, for, for them. So those are some of the things that we have done. On the issue of uh, the, asphalted the asphalted roads, road. I mean, um, I have, uh, at pains, uh, given the education uh, a number of times during my community engagement that, look, a member of parliament has three opportunities to bring about development. One is the use of the common fund, the district assembly's common fund. That is where government is uh, expected to allocate about 5% of, uh, you know, total revenue to the district assemblies. And out of that, a, a share is given to the member of parliament to carry out some developmental projects. And that is one way that a member of parliament can use to carry out development. And I have evidence to show what I've used that for. Another way is to link up with development partners, be it uh, civil society organizations or non-governmental organizations. We have done that also in this constituency by way of linking up with Wulugu Project, uh, Qatar Charity, and many other such uh, civil society organizations and non-governmental organizations to provide health facilities, water facilities, and many of some of the projects that they have uh, you know, listed. The third one is true lobbying central government. And like I indicated in the beginning, 
uh, through the lobbying, we got these get funds projects that I, you know, enumerated. We got some of the electrification projects that I spoke about. We got the school bus for the Kalapoheni Senior High. We got the dormitory for the Nobi school, school. I mean, those things were done under the previous NDC government. Now, in this uh, current dispensation, a gentleman told you what Nana Akufuado told a, a, a constituency that visited him once and uh, reminded him of some promises he made to the constituency. And his response to them was that because they didn't vote the MPP candidate, he has forgotten about that constituency. So in constituencies such as mine, especially that I am not a quiet member of parliament, I'm a loud and critic uh, of this administration, it becomes very difficult for you to uh, be successful at lobbying for projects. But given the relationships that we have, there are a number of ways that we have done that successfully. In fact, sometimes we do it through third parties. So some of these projects that they speak of, I mean, when we sit down to talk about the history, like drains that we have done at Fo and then uh, Gumani, and then uh, um, um, that is Kalpohene, Lincoln, Kalpohene, and Kambalik uh, these were things that I initiated with a contractor with a lot of resources. And together with the contractor, we, we engaged the Minister of Roads then, uh, using the Yana, uh, and um, I hope he will pardon us, he's our grandfather, because his home was around some of these areas. And so we had to use his name to uh, lobby the central government. And so they awarded it without actually knowing that they were awarding it to make my work easy in the Tamale North constituency. Okay. But at least it got done by that same contractor that I'm speaking about. And the uh, Global Dream Area routes also got done. It's the same thing with uh, this particular project. In fact, uh, if the MPP believes that they are doing their work, uh, they should show us the contractors that are doing it. Because we all know in this country and in this community who, uh, who are MPP contractors and who are NDC contractors. So how come that the construction that is done is done by known NDC construction firms? Oh. And so it should tell you so that, so that a lot of work has gone into it. And the okay. person that they are attributing these works to, these projects started long before he even dreamt of becoming a parliamentary candidate in this constituency. Okay. In fact, uh, recently, I, I think a couple of days ago, I came to supervise the bitumen uh, application on the roads in this area, and they were up in arms. But they soon have forgotten that even when they were going to cut sort for the project, I was here with the contractor for the work to begin. And at that time, their former MCE was there. And I recall again how they insulted the former MCE. I've seen that they are insulting this MCE again because I've come to you know inspect that project. But the truth is that the assembly don't, the assembly doesn't know how these projects come about. If you know how these road contracts are awarded, I think sometimes it's only the regional minister who sign it off. So he may have some information at the time of the award when he signs it off. But most of the time it's awarded at the top and the contractors come to it. The assembly don't know how it works. So when you insult the DCs and the MCs, you are only being unfair to them. And I am going to sound a warning to the MPP in Tamalinov. You will change your life to my DC in Halle. Mm, to wait, if they don't leave me alone, they will continue to change their DCs and MCs because I will continue to make them, you know, useless. Because once they enter office into office and they see that the fights you want them to engage in, they can't win. They are not going to embarrass themselves by engaging in it because they see that whatever I associate with, I have the the facts and I have. The, the groundwork behind me. I never go claiming projects that I don't know about. Oh, and I'm very, you know, also careful about separating the things that I do with the Common Fund from the things that I do with the NGOs and civil society organizations, and then the things that I lobby government to, to do. do. I, I categorize them every time in my uh, uh, deliberations. Right. And so even if it is so central government that is doing it, I'm telling you that they we did it, it unwillingly. Government. And they did it because you have a member of parliament who knows how to lobby, who is smart, who has dribbled the system to get these projects to come. All right. Thank you. All right. Um, that's, that's all time will allow us. That's all time will allow us today. Um, I think we've had a very productive session. I think we've had a very productive session. And just before, um, just before we wrap up, I, I want to just address um, quickly what Chairman said. I'm not feigning ignorance. That's, that's not the right way to put it. We, we know about these rumors, but as a media organization, we cannot speak to such allegations without evidence. And we would not like to peddle the rumors. And so while we might have heard about these things, 
the evidence that has been presented to us today, which we will later verify, is new. It's new to me, and it's new to a lot of us. Um, if, if I speak for other journalists who may have heard about this. So until we can fact check it, you know, someone, was just, speak someone has just yes, shown me. He just, yeah, he so, just brought me this. So, we so this is Ghana Education Service. So okay. what he says is that without when you pay, yes, the without mentioning the name, when you yeah. pay half, they send you this. Okay. And then they use this red ink to mark, to mark out the number. number. So that you cannot report with this letter yet. But they are giving you evidence that if you pay in full, they, they will now reveal to this to you. All and right. with this number, you can now report and to the I place where you have been sent. And I will ask you, gentlemen, to please That's what give they this do. information to my producer sitting behind the desk there. So that when we can confirm, we can give you um, a fact-checked, unbiased position um, on this matter. Or just basically just bring you the information so you would know exactly what's happening and why it's happening. Then we can ask informed questions. But um, our time is up. We have to go. But I, I believe we have been joined by the women's organizer. So I'll just give you one minute to, to say something and then, and, and then um, we'll say goodbye. Please, can you pass on the microphone to her? Uh, that's Bazama. Filana ma pampundi. Tongbanu marishan panyala. Don't call Kalkalma, to Honorable Ma, or Azo Pacquaya Kung. Brab Gardner would pay you up, go song bazaar, five million, five million. Or Abazan, Tizadi Tabuna Lafenia Dadam, or Abola Doctor Bima, cut the Pu constituency Maza into two. A first group mother, Bella Bishop School, cut Doctor Bima Masha Bedene, cut the Shabia for Zion. Constituency is a trapper at the manga. Cardan Yibu, as was a Kuraniza to Zarabiadene, Quen the Panum Bien Yi, Cabazamo, Nala Pason Bacanadene, Toruzu Bra 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 Lila to Zadala Fezo. Now you come a Shabra Mala breast cancer, cup of minimum male. Lala or that check up a Vitamazo, Vigman Cashabra Bank, Quarala and Manu Dolba, Catinia Dinya and Tangsham. Those who mandala katoni katizamba in changa shipti in ta shipti mane kabisha brani ya tebrusun toro zoe tu mane matuku toza nte kalle ten yarma alafya bo mamani ora lambo ambulance debata yung tinsi angoma ambulance ma brani yelo mne bora motokin nari nanga swakan mpolama kabizangla ni maza nchang balani kora nuru kutoni o kusaka la nang semana na wuno to bo double kamia vli. Zosta kam karete non kobi ala la problema kala la pago karala la motoki man kare nzono kora nere nzono nere debe simti la la dzo cha mampa ambasulo kana wundo odalere na wuyi koma drabe chang shal kony la la ambulance gahandle ma de film ya ya karnya la bisha adam dabiar pundi ya ya toro zomi ta iko kaptima mpora so kam kaya la manema zungo tizania nete ni chalo ono pose. Right. Thank you. Um, and just to and just to wrap up our conversation today, uh, the women's organizer in the constituency is talking about some interventions that the honourable member of parliament has done for women. She talks about widows who were given an amount of 500 Ghana cities and cloth and other things each. For them to be able to start small businesses to support themselves. She spoke about breast cancer screening. Of course, we are in the month of October and it's Breast Cancer Awareness Month, so I'm glad you brought that up. So uh, she says that he's organized breast cancer screening for women in the constituency. And she speaks about one instance where an ambulance was provided and, and, and a motorcade, she said. The community requested for a motor king okay. to be used for that purpose. Okay. And uh, I had troubles with the community okay. because I told them to give me time to get them a proper ambulance. Okay. But eventually I provided the ambulance for them. So, so she's just speaking right. about it. And she ended by encouraging all the women to vote for the Honorable Member of Parliament. And I think because we began with the Imam, it is um, proper that we end um, with the Imam as well. So if, if you would like to contribute... Um, to the conversation we have had here to end, we'll be grateful. So, the prayer pam. To turn down ma. Oye ni chini chuma ma. Oye na tukana te nzang tu fabla zang sound tu mana wone. Nimbo so umimi tu mana wone kan tu mana umba mi oyela. Or you look mazaha, Kada the man and told it now and told it. But there's thought the Suhuland Manawane, 
ntiro ne o chang to ne katang ban ma tan de tiar ne sham kara gar la la na on nang la la te ti na on nang la te ti o ma tia de la ne da de ma ne ma ne tang ban ma song sum na o mi ye ne to yum ta ba de so mi den ko be zang be da de ma ne ma de so o be sham ma na o song bo gar on on de mi o ma o ma ne on song o ma song a on song bo gar la Tor, tor, Ton tibo yala na on dene na mana on tim ngum kambal ni ya sunga na on tamo tone na on tamo tone rabban ya zolam na on fasa na wa elam takfir la na wa na la na kuna mina la hasare rabban ya zolam na on fasa na wa elam takfir la na wa tarham na la na kuna mina la hasare rabban ya zolam na on fasa na wa elam takfir la na wa tarham na la na kuna mina la hasare rabban ya la taja al na fitin na tili la zina ka faru wa kfir la na rabban ya na ka la kule shen ka dero Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-ahirati hasana Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-ahirati hasana Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fi al-ahirati hasana wa qin azaban nar bil rahmatika ya arhamur rahimin subhana rabbik rabbi zatul mal Sallu ala rasulil karim Now we are launching my campaign on Saturday this Saturday okay. at the Nobisco Park so I thought that I should just slip it in for those who are watching to uh, right. Come and support us launch the Tamalin of NDC campaign All at right. the Nobisco Park on Saturday, All right. 12th October. All right. And on that note, we would um, say thank you to especially every member of this community who has come out today to participate in today's edition of Community Manifesto. Thank you so much, Tamale North. Thank you so much, Honorable Member of Parliament. My thank pleasure. you, um, Chairman. Thank you, Imam, Women's um, organizer. organizer, and all Thanks, the leaders sir. who came here today. We're very grateful to you. And to you who took time off to watch Community Manifesto today, thank you. This is our platform for engaging with people in various constituencies and communities ahead of the elections, basically to find out the issues in your community and the main considerations you will make when deciding who to lead you in your constituency and community ahead of the elections. Um, we will come to your constituency soon. Feel free to connect with us on X with the hashtag Community Manifesto with the name of your constituency, and we just might visit you soon. And we're still in northern Ghana, and so if you are in the northern region, please look at our social media platforms for the next constituency we shall be visiting. Thank you so much.